Okay, so we've been looking at morphs. Let's look at morphs from a different perspective. Let's open a morph, the workspace. Now let's just open a random morph. Ooh. Let's just open a plain old morph. And one way to do it is say a morph cone equals morph new open in world. And then I'm going to say inspect after that. Notice, let's look at this. We're creating a morph by sending the new message to the morph class. And then we're sending the open in world message to that new morph we just created. And then we're sending the inspect message to that new morph. So it's going to create a new morph, open it in world, and then inspect it. And then put the, uh, the morph itself into a variable named a morph. Sure enough, if we are to actually look at a morph and print it, we see it is indeed amorph 3668 and here it is and we can look at all our different little variables as we move it around and you notice the bounds it starts at 0 18 and it goes down to 50 comma or 50 by 58 in the bottom right and the owner is a paste up morph called the world the world is the main window you see on the screen Submorphs, it has none. The full bounds is again the same amount. The color, it's the color blue, and it has no extensions. Okay, let's see what we can do with the morph. Notice we can move it around, and suddenly the bounds have moved over. If we were to move it again, you would see the bounds move again. Even as we move, they will update. Okay, we can also do something like color, color, red. And if I say it right, nothing more expected. Self, I see. Color equals color red. Let's see if it works that way. And when we move it, sure enough, it updates. Or we could say, perhaps, self, color, do it. Well, it's time. Let's send it back to blue. And indeed, it does. So we can see how we can, within the inspector window, do things. Now let's look at a, a special property of morphs. If you click on the morph with the Mac the way I have it set up, it's the middle click button. You get a series of little objects around the morph. These are called halos. Halos are basically little control buttons for the morph they're associated with. This one in the lower right hand corner changes size. This one changes color. And in fact, we just changed the color. Let's change it again to that highlighting color, etc. You get the idea. This is a debug menu. It lets you inspect the morph as we already did. Inspect the owner chain, which will show you chain of owners. This is the current morph. This is the owner morph. If we had more morphs embedded in each other, we would get a longer chain. So let's move that out of the way. Continue. Our debugging mes message also lets us do a few other things like edit our balloon help. Help not yet supplied for a morph. Okay. Duplicate. Press shift to make a sibling. This doesn't work with all, but with this one it does. It just cr created a complete copy of the morph. And if we were to inspect it, let's go to the debug. There we go. And inspect the morph. We would see it's morph number one, two, uh, one, 2591. 
which is an exact copy except for the position of our morph 3668. Now, a fun thing about morphs, if, if you've created a morph like this, and you want, you can create textual reference. Notice in this morph, we have an extra button. Create textual references to dropped morphs. So let's drop this morph in. And now it's given us a reference to this morph. And if we inspect it, again, we get an inspector window on morph 3668. Let's close one of those windows. Lots of menus popping up for an unknown reason. Okay, continuing our cycle. This is a rotation button. We'll actually rotate the contents of the morph, assuming it's been drawn using the standard drawing routines. If you did this with my OpenGL Asteroids morph, it wouldn't work right. This is a make a tile representing the object. In fact, if we were inspect that tile, we would find it's a tile morph, and its owner would be nil. We can just go up through them until we find something that's different. A player, I'm not sure what a player is at this point. It's an object reference, and it's not referring to anything right now, ah, because still going up the hierarchy. Ah, here we go. So, a time morph object reference. And of course, it didn't do anything. Let's try open in world. Do it. There we go. There's the morph we have. Now if we inspect it. That morph. We will see its owner is the world, because it's now in the world. The world, by the way, is this morph right here. We can expect the entire window, and we will see that it is the world. Okay. So actually, I'm not sure what this tile is supposed to be doing. I thought I knew what it is, and I don't. So let's continue looking at our morphs. Here is our next thing. Open a viewer for me. Press shift for a snapshot. OK. This gives you an eToys interface. eToys is for scripting. eToys is his own programming system which just happens to be built on top of Morph, and they backported it so that Pretty much all of eToys can work with, with most morphs. So we can actually do a script by clicking on the little exclamation point, and it moves it forward. Forward in this case is up. Or we can make a sound. Or we can change the x and y values. Let's change the x value. And notice as we change the x value, it's shifting over. Morph's heading. If we shift the heading, it's going to turn it. This is for um, when kids are programming, they've got little turtles on the screen and they can manipulate a turtle. So basically, these scripting, these eToy scripting things uh, make an individual morph something you would use and program in a kid's program as though it were turtle, if you're familiar with the logo language. Okay, so these are the basic morphs. We have bunches of others. We have, for scripts, you can create scripts associated with this morph without having to open the, the Squeak browser. We can go through, observation, change various color-related things, drag and drop, we can change basically the same things we can change under the halos. Layout, clip submorphs. So a lot of the capabilities of morphs you can script simply by creating a little button. 
C's has to do with etoys again. Um, as I recall, it, it has to do with, with detecting what color the object is, is moving over. Again, for, for programming little turtles that move over objects and detect they've moved over, etc. Overlaps, touches, pin use. This is for drawing with morph. If we set the pin on, we could actually drag the morph around and leave a little trail of dots or whatever. Motion, here's things. You get the idea. There's an awful lot of stuff associated with a morph. Some of it is only for e-toys, and some of it is the general stuff that is available under the halos. So now we know. These things can be made into buttons all by themselves. And now morphs co color equals blue. And we have a little button that we could program a little bit and change things. Certainly we can just click on it again and so on. You get the idea. So each of these little commands here is its own button. See, we just rounded the, the corners, etc. All right, moving on. From creating a viewer, we can move to collapse. Now that turns it into a little collapse thingy, which we can then open up again. And of course, here's our main menu, for which many things are already available. And we can just close it. So, I think that's enough for right now. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Let's open. Oh, wait a minute. Let's just open a new morph. We inspected it. Now there's a difference between inspect and another choice we have. Let's explore it. Explore opens a different window. Explore opens basically a tree list. That tree list is not live. You can see we can move it around and it doesn't update. It's basically a fixed list of all the current values when we created the explore. It lets you explore basically the relationships of things without being able to edit the relationships. It's a static snapshot of, of whatever you're looking at. Notice that our morph here we can explore. And that's different than the other one. But in both cases, the owner is a paste up morph called World. Has no submorph, so we could create a submorph. We wouldn't see it change as we did it, but we could put that one in that one. You couldn't see it at all. But now, first we'll have to change things so it will accept drops. And now indeed, it accepts drops. And you notice that the explore window doesn't change. Submorphs are still counted as an array of zero morphs, whereas in this, inspect this one. Inspect morph. We now see it has it one submorph. Now we can move it out by drilling down by clicking over each morph individually and move it out and indeed it updates to zero morphs. And of course we can go the other way. Let's make this small except drops and now we can of course embed this one and this one and in fact we now see that this morph now has a submorph this morph but again our explorer window still hasn't changed anything but if we opened a new explorer window we would see all the changes inspector is good for seeing the live actions of an object explorer is good for seeing the inner relationships of the object at the time you looked at it, or you clicked for explore. So, 
end of tutorial on halos and exploring and the relationship between exploring and inspecting.